What is it about Defy that is so astounding? And more importantly, what is Defy? Well, Defy is currently one of the most important use cases in cryptocurrencies, and it is one of the many reasons that this bull run is continuing. Defy is an abbreviation for decentralized finance. To comprehend Defy, we must first understand centralized money. Centralized finance is a financial market structure in which all orders or transactions are routed via a single organization, such as a bank with no rival marketplaces. The illustration above depicts one of the most fundamental activities of the financial system, lending and borrowing. This fundamental role permits those with excess money to lend to people in need of more money, such as starting a business, which essentially puts idle money to work and, as a result, leads to general economic growth. And for hundreds of years, banks have acted as a go-between for the lender and the borrower. If you have some spare cash, you can put it in a savings account and earn a meager 0.1% APRA annual percentage return. The bank can then utilize your funds to lend to borrowers at, say, 20% APRA. The bank then makes a profit on the discrepancy. The introduction of blockchain technology has the potential to meet the needs of these third parties, aka banks. Without a third party, the variations in lending and borrowing rates can instead be divided among the lenders. The use of blockchain technology such as smart contracts, to eliminate central financial middlemen led in the emergence of decentralized finance. A smart contract is a piece of code that permits certain actions to be taken when certain criteria are met. If you're acquainted with code, it's comparable to an NFL statement. For example, if Tom buys an NFT for $100, he'll get the NFT. If he tries to buy the NFT for less than $100, the transaction will fail. The Ethereum blockchain is now the most well-established smart contract cryptocurrency. Other upcoming smart contract cryptocurrencies, such as Solana and Terra, are seeking to tackle what Ethereum could not. However, in order to build a functional financial system, we must first acquire the essential instruments. Let's have a look at the applications that comprise DeFi. Stablecoins are cryptocurrencies that are backed or tied to the US dollar or another fiat currency. The S coin, with a current market value of over $1.70 billion, is the most widely adopted stablecoin. What is the purpose of DeFi's stablecoin? Consider it a form of currency in the DeFi realm. Assume you are purchasing food in the United States and you intend to pay in USD rather than other currencies such as the British pound. The same is true in the DeFi world, where Bitcoin must be used instead of fiat currency. Why is a fiat peg slash backed cryptocurrency required in DeFi? Doesn't it negate the point of cryptocurrencies? Cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin can be used as a medium of exchange but they are extremely volatile. Stablecoins are less dangerous because their value is always equal to that of its fiat counterpart and therefore serve as a safe haven for DeFi users. Are you concerned that the value of your Bitcoin may decline? It may be exchanged for stablecoin without the requirement for a centralized exchange. A decentralized exchange or DEX is a cryptocurrency exchange. However, Unlike centralized exchanges like as Binance, which is managed by a single authority, DEX are totally decentralized exchanges. They are made up of smart contracts and codes. Exchanges on the Ethereum blockchain, such as Uniswap, allow you to swap to nearly any other cryptocurrency. How do these DEX function? One of the most significant principles is that having people like you and me offer liquidity to a pool is one of the most crucial concepts. It may appear difficult, but bear with me as I explain. DEX rely on automated market makers, AM, which are similar to stock market market makers. Market maker's goal is to provide liquidity, the ability to buy and sell at any moment for a more seamless trading experience. ABC shares, for example, have a bidding price of $1.50 and an asking price of $1.50.20.
The market maker will provide liquidity by offering a large number of these ABC shares for trading and in exchange. They will profit by purchasing the shares for $1.50 and selling them at $50.20. The spread is the difference between the bidding and asking prices. So if you want to acquire a share, you are paying a premium for it. The spread is the difference between the bidding and asking prices. So if you wish to buy a share, you are technically paying a premium for the liquidity provided by these market makers. However, indexes, market makers operate differently because they are all governed by code, but their basic goal remains the same, which is to provide liquidity for traders. Consider liquidity pools to be a collection of cryptocurrencies, often two unique cryptocurrencies, but there may be more. However, for the sake of simplicity, we will just use two cryptocurrencies in one pool. Traders can no-swap or exchange these two cryptocurrencies for a very modest charge. To understand how it works, consider a basic math equation that serves as the foundation of AMM. An example can be seen in the hypothetical pool above, which is filled with Ethereum and Bitcoin. In this situation, because the coins are distributed evenly, there would be 50% of each in the pool. The letters A and B denote the values of Bitcoin and Ethereum, respectively. Given that C is a constant whose value will never change, the values of A and B must be modified on a regular basis. Assume we go back in time and Ethereum is worth $1 and Bitcoin is worth $1,000. We will need 1,000 ETH and 1 BTC to offer liquidity to the pool, which corresponds to a total of $2,000 supplied for liquidity, $1,000 F and $1,000 BTC. The constancy is 1 million and will always be that number. If a trader swaps 100 ETH at $100 for 0.1 BTC at $100, remember, 1F equals $1 and 1 BTC equals $1,000. The pool now has $1,100 in ETH and $900 in BTC, or does it? Because $1,100, $900, 1 million constancy is always the same value. 1,100 ETH is worth $1,000 and 0.9 BTC is worth $1,000. There are more ETH in the pool now, but the value remains the same. ETH is still worth $1,000. This price shift is referred to as slippage. We need people to convert BTC for ETH to the pool in order to return the value of these cryptocurrencies to market value. These individuals can then profit by purchasing these cryptocurrencies at a lower market value, 1,100F at $1,000, and selling them at a higher price on other exchanges. These individuals can then profit by purchasing these cryptocurrencies at a lower market value, 1,100F at $1,000, and selling them at a higher price, 1,100F at $1,100 much like market makers in the stock market. The higher the overall value of the liquidity pool, the better to address the excessive volatility in price while exchanging cryptocurrencies. This is why so many developers are attempting to entice individuals to deposit their crypto assets into their liquidity pools. Lending and borrowing are both necessary components of a functioning financial system. If you want to borrow money from a bank, you must present collateral. The same is true of the decentralized system. However, it is virtually always over-collateralized in decentralized finance. Why do we need to over-collateralize our assets in order to borrow? Assume you have a long position in Bitcoin and plan to retain it for a long time. Instead of simply storing them in a cold wallet, you might lend them in a decentralized exchange and earn interest on them. You can also leverage your Bitcoin position by borrowing other assets. While your Bitcoin is increasing in value, you can make some more money by reinvesting your borrowed funds in anything else. However, it is critical to understand that cryptocurrencies are extremely volatile. 
and there is always a liquidation threshold on how much you can borrow. If the value of your assets falls below a particular level, the liquidation threshold will be reached and your assets will be liquidated. When using DeFi, there are several hazards. First and foremost, DeFi is governed by code. However, because DeFi is so young, even the code can be attacked. As a result, you may have heard that certain decentralized exchanges have lost a few hundred million USD due to exploits, which has been happening for quite some time. There is no way to predict when this will occur until it occurs, but engineers have been working hard to ensure that their exchange will never be misused. This is not a major risk, but it is one of the present drawbacks of DeFi. If you utilize the Ethereum DeFi chain, which is the most popular, you will see that the gas fees are ridiculously expensive, $1.30-ish for one transaction. Gas fees are required for everything. Approval of transactions, withdrawal and deposit, and much more. Sending $100 plus $1.30 in petrol expenses doesn't sound like a good deal. However, there are many more chains with lower gas prices, like Phantom, Avalanche, Polygon, and others. Phantom's gas fees can be as low as $0.04 per transaction, a far cry from the Ethereum chain's gas fees. However, because the majority of the developments are taking place on the Ethereum mainnet, it remains a challenge to be solved. Perhaps in the near future, when Ethereum eventually becomes proof of stake, gas fees will be drastically reduced. However, because the majority of the developments are taking place on the Ethereum mainnet, it remains a challenge to be solved. Maybe in the near future, when Ethereum eventually becomes proof of stake, gas fees will drop considerably, but for now, we'll simply have to cope with these ridiculous fees. Finally, be wary of con artists. 9-5% of all cryptocurrencies will someday be worthless similar to the early days of the internet prior to the dot-com bubble. When using DeFi, use caution at all times. If feasible, use a hard wallet such as a ledger. Before investing in any website or cryptocurrency, do your homework. Rug pull, in which developers cash out all of the money invested by users like you and me, is fairly popular in DeFi. One method to avoid this is to conduct your own study take a look at the developers, investigate their Twitter or Discord accounts. These are the steps I would take when seeking for new projects. Of course, you may take extra precautions by double-checking every page you visit to ensure it is not a phishing site. Before connecting your wallet to a website, be sure you're comfortable with it. Going to CoinMarketCap or CoinGecko and searching for the cryptocurrency project you're looking for is one way to ensure that the website you're visiting is legitimate. On these pages, there will always be a website. Make sure to check the description below to get $10 in BTC.